So this is the second week of our Speed Bump sermon series, and several weeks ago, I asked you all to text in what have been the the major speed bumps in your life that have caused you to need to realign. They have jolted you maybe, but the most common response from everybody that responded was loss and grief. It, It was the death of a loved one. So whether it has been a child or, or your spouse, a sibling, a parent, a, a relative, a, a friend, this is something that is absolutely universal in this community of faith. And as much as all of us know up here, we know from an early age it happens. We, we all know that death is something that is going to happen. In a sense, you could be prepared, you're just not. And so when that speed bump hits, whether it was after a long battle, a long illness, or was in the quick of the night, it, is, it just is so paralyzing. And, and throughout the ministry that I have been able to participate in, when I sit with people who are in loss, when I myself has, have sat in loss, there are not sufficient words, except from Scripture. I do believe that Scripture is is the best resource for us to go to in our times of loss and grief. And I'm going to go so far to say that the book that we're going to read this morning, the the passage comes from the book of Ruth. And and I believe that actually it's in our Bible because it's going to help us figure out what do we do when we grieve? How do we survive tragedy? And so uh, we are going to follow along and read through that first chapter. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day and all that it has held. We thank you for the giftedness of so many who made this day possible and, and for all that serve. We thank you most of all for your word, for your living word that as we read this ancient story, it will come alive before us. And, and God, our prayer is that your Holy Spirit that is within each of us, that it would speak, nothing, nothing of me, that it would be your Holy Spirit that would peak, speak words of comfort this day. We pray this in Christ's name, amen. The prophet Isaiah writes these words, comfort, O oh comfort my people, God will feed you like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Hear now the first chapter of the book of Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and they remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died. And she was left with her two sons. And so these took Moabite wives And the name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. And when they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Hilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Loss and grief can feel like a roller coaster. We say this of of families where too many bad things have happened to that one family. First, this family faces a famine. So they move, but not like we would. There was no movers or cars or trucks. It would have been a 50-mile journey through rugged and steep terrain. But at least Naomi had a husband and two sons to do the trip with her. And then they get there, and they have 10 good years together with their wives. But then the sons die too. 
loss upon loss, grief upon grief. Comfort, oh comfort, my people. God will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Then Naomi started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. Naomi heard that God was doing remarkable things somewhere, elsewhere, in other places, to other people. God was considerate, but not to her. She, she probably should have stayed in Moab. She'd been there 10 years. That's where her, her daughter-in-laws were from. And in Moab, in grief and in despair, she could stay. But something drew her to go where God was at work, where she heard that God was considering God's people And so the three women, they begin their long journey over the steep and rough terrain back to Jerusalem. Comfort, oh comfort, my people. God will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs into his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. But Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. And then she kissed them and they wept aloud. When someone dies, there are always so many affected. And for a minute, we forgot about the other two widows. Orpah and Ruth, they lost their husbands too. For whatever reason, they've lived there 10 years and haven't had any children. 10 years prior, they had to to leave their mother's homes and cleave to their husbands' families. These women were young still. They were in their 20s. And they are willing to leave the only known thing left to them and travel with their mother-in-law to a land unknown where they would be total and complete outsiders. Naomi wishes for these women that, that the Lord would be as kind to them as they have been to her and her children. And it, she almost seemed to believe that the Lord does do good. The Lord can do good, but not necessarily to her life. And so in her grief, she wants to set them free. It's like she has a disease. She wants to set them free from from this grief and this death that seems to follow her every step of the way. And so she encourages them, no, start again. But for her, the road had ended. For Naomi, only despair. Comfort, oh comfort my people. God will feed his flock like a shepherd He will gather the lambs into his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The daughters say to her, no, we will return with you to your people. Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way. I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought that there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sins, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. This is how it feels sometimes. We turn almost self-destructive in our grief. Naomi is so deep in the pit of grief and sadness and depression, she fears she's going to pull people in with her. 
It, it, Naomi admits that she's fragile. She admits she's open and vulnerable about her lack of worth, the vacuum of the purpose that she used to have because she used to have purpose. She was a mom. She was a wife. And now nothing. The very things that gave her identity, gone. And so she didn't deserve community. We punish ourselves. There was no hope left for her, none for herself, and none she could offer to others. And after losing someone, it can feel like the hand of the Lord has turned against you. But notice how intentional the author is. There's no hand of the Lord mentioned when Naomi's and husband's dies. But here Naomi thinks God has turned away from her. Comfort, oh comfort my people, I will lead you like a shepherd, gather the lambs, gently hold you in my bosom. Then the women wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. And so she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you, to turn back from following you. Go you where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. May the Lord do thus to me and more as well, if, if even death parts me from you. Naomi, when Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We all need Ruth when we grieve. In fact, you all, many of you, might need to be Ruth for someone this week. Just take a moment and consider who in your life has experienced the death of a loved one right now. How can you come alongside them this week and weep with them? How can we cling to them, not for ourselves, but to literally help support them to stand physically, emotionally, and spiritually? Make the phone call. Take the road trip. Invite them for coffee. If someone comes to your mind, that is God calling you to be a Ruth to them. This is the amazingness of being part of a community of faith. It's so that when friends are, are feeling less than or hopeless are in the pit, that we can then come alongside and cling. But if you are a Naomi, I want you to be encouraged to let the Ruth come alongside you. Say yes to getting a Stephen minister. Join the grief group. It can feel like the end of the road, and I want to remind you, the people of this church, this faith family, want to be your Ruth. Where you go, we will go. We will weep with you. Your God is our God. We pray with you. We will believe for you. We will hope for you. Comfort, oh comfort my people. God will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. May it be so in my life and in yours.